Well, happy Saturday and welcome to season two of The Connect Show. I'm Natalie Cargyle, and we are so excited to share. I don't know if you've seen it on, on the internet yet, but we're sharing today that our show has been picked up on the CW at 7 a.m. in Austin, Texas. And we're so excited, so proud, and so thrilled to be sharing with more women in business and female entrepreneurs across Texas. So now that The Connect Show has been picked up in Austin, Texas, we thought, hmm, we need to have a co-host in Austin. So you guys help me welcome your new co-host of The Connect Show, Texas, Wendy Martinez Morales. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Natalie. So excited to finally share that you are going to be with us on Saturday mornings. And you know, you're so much, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a go-getter, dressed to impress all the time. I don't know how you do it. Um, I wake up with all my three kids and I'm exhausted. You have three kids and you're like ready for the world. <laughs> So I love also that you're bossing with your husband every day at Morales Law Office. So tell the people a little bit about Wendy Morales. Thanks, Nellie. So my husband over Morales uh, opened up the Morales Law Office in 1996 in Midland, Texas. We then got married uh, in 2003. And two years later in 2005, we took a leap of faith we packed up our babies and moved to Austin to open up a second office. Mm. Talk about a little scary there. Right. That is when I fully took on the position as administrator for the business in which I oversee its operations, administration, and finances. Morales mm. Law Office has uh, really expanded and is now in Austin, Midland, Georgetown, and surrounding counties. Wow, that is so awesome. And I love the way that you're going to be able to share your perspective from an administrative and organizational standpoint, uh, because I think we all need that, especially moms that are working from home. So I'm excited to learn your methods and talk about expansion and growth um, while we're together. So, so excited for that. You will be leading a mastermind in 2021. So you guys get excited. Well, Wendy, you know, it's, it's your first day on the show and we are kicking today off with an interesting topic, and it's the cancel culture. Cancel culture. It has uh, once again been thrusted into the trending discussions after the chaos at the Capitol January 6th. Now, 48 hours after that event, I woke up to like hundreds of notifications on my Instagram. Now, Wendy, I'm usually not popular. So I thought, you know, did someone like break into my Instagram and post something crazy? Well, when I hopped on, I saw nearly 10,000 views on a post from the 2019 Connect Fest, um, a, an event that featured a past Connect member and former mayoral candidate, Jenny Cudd. Um, and, you know, back on January 6th, Cudd began trending after filming herself at the Capitol participating uh, in the events. And because her name was hashtagged on one of my posts from two years ago, I guess it circled back around and the comments were crazy, all kinds of comments you can imagine, but some were saying to cancel the Connect Network just because she was hashtagged on my page from 2019. So cancel culture, we're gonna talk about it today. And Cut said on the news last week that people are canceling her after her actions. And of course, there are now reports that the tech giants are banning together to even cancel the president from social media um, altogether. So we need a tech expert. We need a tech expert, Wendy, uh, to get into it. And I'm excited that we have Kat Shelby here to talk about what responsibilities tech companies have uh, when it comes to social media speak, right? So yeah, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. I'm happy to be here, Natalie. Thank you uh, for having me. I always love it. Always love it. So, um, you know, ladies, what, what are your thoughts on, on this cancel culture? And when is it too much? Should and, and my additional question is, should someone be canceled for liking a post of the canceled person? Because I've been seeing that too. Mm -hmm. Break it down, Kat, break it down. I mean, obviously, cancel culture is thriving, and we all know and we're all aware of, you know, basically 
the vast issues that it arises because it is a slippery slope, you know, and, and there's the thought process that if you go on and you cancel someone, at what point can they have some type of act of contrition or be able to come back from being canceled? You know, and like, it's, it's a very slippery slope. It might just be because I've been of my age or I've been living under a rock. At first, I didn't really understand cancel culture until I sat down and talked about it with my kids. Um, you know, I think it has affected many people, companies, organizations across the board. But to me, I feel like when we choose to cancel someone or something, we are not giving them the chance to, in a way, right their wrongs, or in better words, learn from their mistakes. Although I know the situation is not always as simple as that. What are your thoughts, Kat? There are consequences for the actions and what you do and what you say. Um, you know, that's gonna be the big thing right there, is finding that fine line between allowing someone to continue down the path of what may for them be self-destruction, and then allowing them also to be able to come back from you know that brink, so to speak. I, I agree. That's exactly kind of what I was thinking. I think you know it's important to take ownership for your actions, especially as an adult. Um, mm -hmm. But I think everyone should at least be able to come back to the table and apologize, put an apology out there. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to accept the apology. So mm -hmm. I think overall, the internet uh, always wins. <laughs> The internet has a mind of its own and we just, all people, I think you have to be careful on how you move every day, especially if you're on social media. Mm -hmm. So talk about the responsibility of the tech giants, Kat. You know, that one is going to be a really tough one because, you know, you have to look at the whole thing and that's, we have to start at point, how do we get from point A to point B. So that's taking a look at, you know, over 56,000 tweets and going, how do we allow an algorithm to basically promote this type of thing, you know, item, whatever that may be. Um, I think there's going to be lots of things coming up. We'll see the FCC kind of take hold and see what they can do. And there's going to be lots of discussions around, you know, where do they draw that line? You know, what is, you know, what can be charged for hate speech? You know, what is online bullying? What details all this? And, you know, it's going to be a question because obviously with uh, 230 in place, tech giants are considered a third party, which means that all they say is, hey, we are giving you the platform. What you say and do is up to you. Very interesting, Kat. I love you covering it all. And so happy we have a tech you know, lady, right? Tech woman in the building. So I love what you bring, Kat. I love your insight. We're going to see you next week. And you at home, stay close. Can you hear all my kids screaming like I'm trying to mute in and out because my twins, it's Saturday morning. They're like, let's go play. We are going to take a quick break. But coming up next, we have this week's Minute with Marcy. And later, we sit down with the owner of Boss Lady Eyewear. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Connect Network, where we bring you girl bosses month after month after month at our masterminds. If you are ready to expand your circle, join the Connect Network's membership today. Welcome to this week's Minute with Marcy. Today we're talking skincare. We're seeing a very common problem at MC Aesthetics right now. We're all wearing masks. So we are calling this mask me, and it's really just an area of breakout from wearing masks. It's important to address this skincare problem from two directions. You need to be using a very good skincare line at home, daily, twice a day, as well as addressing these needs professionally. It's important to come in and speak with one of our skincare specialists to see what approach is best. We offer everything from chemical peels to hydrofacials to a traditional facial. Um, we even incorporate some meditation. So at MC Aesthetics, we can help you address everything from your mask knee to your Botox and just traditional anti-aging. We'll see you next week. Well, welcome back to the show. So I'm excited. Claire Cortez is in the building. Her brand is called Boss Lady Eyewear. And honey, you are showing up as bossy as can be on this Saturday. Okay, so I love, love, love 
everything. Tell us about your brand and the meaning behind the name Boss Lady. Behind it, at the end of the day, it's individual people like myself being a boss, living the lifestyle of a boss with great accessories. I love it. So let's talk growth and expansion. We are looking to the spring and you're adding some hot new products to the line. Talk about that, Claire. With spring break coming along, summer, the hot weather, there's going to be other accessories that are going to be coming into the different collections. Um, all of that is something for everyone to tune to so that they can keep up. Um, but definitely, it's not just going to be eyewear. That is for sure. Well, Claire, I always love to hear how women are celebrating their wins. And 2020 was big for you. Talk a, a little bit about your wins in your business. Yeah, so in 2020, I launched my website in December. Uh, towards the end of the year, I did have a major end of the year sell that reached many, many customers. Um, it actually even reached international, which was very, very big for me and my team. Uh, we reached here locally. We also reached the surrounding counties, uh, Fort Stockton, Andrews, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin. So it was a very, very big accomplishment for me and my team. Wendy, were you going to leave us with something today before Claire goes? Well, we've got our own boss lady up next. Attorney Christine Schwartz is talking divorce during the pandemic. What you need to know next. I'm Janine Pruitt. Thanks for joining me for this week's market update. Today, we've got 676 homes on the market. We ended the year with a little over 700, so inventory has come down just a little bit. That's showing some positive movement. I want to talk to you for a minute about contingency. You want to buy a home, but you need to sell your current home in order to invest the equity in the next home. Where do we start? Well, it starts with phone call. I always say, the first phone call should be to your well-qualified real estate agent. When you have a contingency, you're going to be doing two real estate transactions at the same time. You're going to find a home you love, close on that, put your home on the market and find a buyer, close on that at the same time. It's a big job. So think of hiring your real estate agent like hiring a coach. You want to make sure you hire a coach that knows all the plays, that's been in the game a long time and knows the game inside and out. And then as you progress, you start adding people to your team. Your lender, that's an important person on your team. You want someone that'll take your call, answer your questions and be available to work you through any problems that might arise. Then your inspector, your insurance company. Importantly, we're going to add another real estate agent probably on our team. That agent's gonna represent the buyer. We need to make sure they're well qualified. We also need to work with the buyer that's buying your house and make sure they're well qualified, that their finances are in order, their qualifications, their lending guidelines are in order so that everything goes smooth. So as you can see, there are many, many, many steps to get us through the contingency process. But with a great team, you're the first one on the team, we can get it done. And next thing you know, you'll be in your new home. Well, welcome back to the show. Attorney Christine Schwartz she is co-owner of Navaretti and Schwartz, and she is going to be dropping some information and education over the next several weeks when it comes to divorce. And Christine, my first question for you today, uh, are the numbers up right now since the pandemic? Unfortunately, yes. I mean, the numbers have steadily increased. Um, there's a perception by many that courts have been closed in 2020 due to the mm -hmm. pandemic or that cases aren't moving right now. But the courts have made made changes to modify to make sure things are still being filed and still moving. But to be honest, I think the real surge is going to be in the early months of 2021. 2020, the pandemic, all of that has an enhanced communication problems in relationships. Of course, we've heard family mm -hmm. violence is up. The money woes have been heightened, which are all common triggers in divorce. I mean, I'm even seeing strong couples that, you know, didn't have problems before 
that are having issues now because of the pandemic, because their well-established routines and stability have been taken away, which it's understandable, but unfortunately it is hitting couples stronger. I mean, it's hitting more couples stronger than others. I think if anything, the couples I've seen that are being more affected are the young couples, the couples that are newlyweds, the couples that maybe only have been married a few years, simply because they don't have the, the years of marriage like, you know, 12 years, 13, 30 years marriage that have been dealing with other problems or different trials and tribulations. They don't have that background. So unfortunately, something bad happens and they're not wanting to deal with it or don't know how to deal with it. And they're running to divorce. Mm. So, Christine, what does a woman need to know if she's consider considering separating or divorcing, divorcing her spouse? It makes our job a little harder in order to build a financial inventory or to build a good picture on what options we need or what options we need to go forward with when they don't know their finances. So I think if a woman's going to start preparing, the best advice would be start trying to gather all that information, the passwords, the accounts, the bank numbers, the credit card, the debts. I have so many women that come here not realizing that the family had debt because from the outside, they looked, everything was fine. They can't be in debt. We just bought a new truck. I mean, but there is debt. And when we start gathering that information, they're, they're shocked. But when we, if the woman comes prepared with that information, I think in the long run, it will help the attorney, help them help in creating a, a more thorough divorce option, you know, conversation. And then it could save some time and money. So let's talk money because there are a lot of people that don't have access to funds, right? So they can't go put a retainer down and try to go get a divorce with, you know, very little capital. What do you say to women that are in a space that really financially, they don't have a lot of opportunity, but maybe they're not in a safe space. How can they move forward with divorce? As far as getting an attorney, so many women are, are, are rejected. They feel rejected that they just can't afford it. So they just stay in a bad relationship. And I don't think, I don't think that's the answer at all. I mean, I think at the end of the day, there are outlets, there are options. I think number one, go talk to someone, go get at least that consult, even if it costs money, get that mm -hmm. first consultation because you might be thinking that your divorce is overwhelming and it's going to cost so much money. But once you talk to that attorney and they break it down for you, your divorce may not be as overwhelming as, as you think it is. And so then maybe you'll find out, oh, I don't need that retainer. I heard someone say that was 10,000. No, you don't. Um, and so then, and even if for whatever reason, they still can't afford to go forward, at least having that first consult, will maybe discuss some options. We'll maybe discuss what avenues they need to go down or maybe realize, okay, I'm maybe not in a ready for divorce right now. Mm -hmm. But if I have this list of things I need to do, then maybe in about four to six months and I start putting some money aside, I will be ready. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, so I have clients that borrow from family. I have clients that use credit cards, um, get their money from their joint bank account. But also that consult, if in that conversation we find out just by talking that, oh, we have an IRA and the IRA has, you know, $50,000, then that's something I'd be like, okay, perfect. We could use that for attorney's fees. You are going to be talking about so much over the next couple of weeks. Share some of the topics you'll be discussing and how yeah. can people reach you, Christine? Um, yes, yes. I am excited to be involved with the Connect in the next few weeks. Um, a couple of topics I want to discuss is I want to go further on continuing to discuss divorce in the new year. This is the new year, 2021. And so there might be some things that people want to know about 2021 or what to expect. I do want to focus on providing women some guidance on becoming Mrs. to Ms., you know, living through and dealing with um, going through a divorce and after the divorce. Mm -hmm. um, I have reached um, a topic I've heard or see many people ask about recently is mediation. Um, is that something that we should use or not? Especially right now with the pandemic, trying to save money and still trying to be amicable. I think mediation is something that people do want to hear about. Um, there's a few other topics I'm kind of throwing out there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about being involved, but if anyone wants to talk to me more about their divorce or just has any questions on what to do, I mean, they're welcome to call my office. Um, Navarrete and Schwartz, we're here in Midland. Um, our number is 432-279-1479, or they could check out our website, um, nstexaslaw.com. We do have a blog on our website that actually covers a lot of interesting topics that um, dealing with um, retirement, wills, you know, dealing with a divorce and pets. I mean, there's some interesting <laughs> topics there. And so if people want to check that out, there's definitely some information they could get there.
things you don't even think about. I can only imagine the dog being a big deal. And the cat. We're looking forward to it, Christine. So happy to have you. And don't go anywhere. Coming up next, if you are looking to spruce up your home for the new year, we have the interior decorator, but really she's a designer. She does all things. It's Julie Emery. She's coming up next. We'll be right back. Texas and happy Saturday and happy new year. I am so excited and ready to take on 2021 with bright eyes and open heart and anticipation for all the new art I get to create for my beautiful clients this year. If you don't know me already, I am Kimberly with Kimberly Cowan Photography and I'm based out of Midland, Texas. And I just want to take a quick minute to share with you who I am and my reason why I love to do what I do for my career. So first and foremost, I am a wife and mother. I have two gorgeous children, 14 and six years old. My children is my absolute reason why I love to do what I do and how I actually fell in love with photography over 10 years ago. I personally love photography because I get to share with my clients what the world looks like through my eyes. And I love seeing all the happiness and joy my portraits bring to my clients and of course my West Texas community. My favorite genre to photograph and what I'm most known for is newborn photography. There is just something about being able to hold and get to know these perfect little humans and photographing their first ever portraits in life is such a blessing to me and I thank God every day for the privilege to be able to do what I do. With that being said, if you are looking for a newborn photographer, I highly recommend pre-booking your appointment on my calendar. I only photograph so many babies a month, so sometimes spot, spots fill up months in advance. And as of right now, I have due dates on my calendar all the way up until July. So don't wait to book. Go ahead and contact me today if you need a newborn photographer. If you have any questions or um, want to go ahead and get on the calendar, please go ahead and find out more about me. You can contact me at www.kimcowanphoto.com. Thank you so much, West Texas. Happy New Year. All right, well, interior designer Julie Emery is going to be with us the next several weeks to help us level up our homes for the spring. Um, so welcome back to the show, Julie. So happy to have you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm excited. Me too. And you know, it's 2021. I love the promo we had running last week. Um, you know, people put away their Christmas trees for the most part. I mean, that's the problem with like multiple trees. I still have one. I'm, the ornaments are off, but it's still in the corner. I can't have somebody's going to get it this weekend. I don't know. <laughs> um, but we're ready to freshen things up in the new year. So how can we freshen up our homes for the spring 2021 on a budget? I would say my go-to um, for budget freshening up is typically paint, pillows, lamps, and some funky accessories. Um, paint is huge. It's simple. It's cheap. Um, you can give your room a totally different look, um, a new color palette just with a coat of paint. Um, add some pillows that have a unique pattern, um, something that you typically wouldn't go for just to give you that kind of unusual twist. Um, lamps, I love lamps. Lamps are my favorite. Um, to me, lamps are kind of like earrings. Uh, they add kind of a sparkle to the room. Um, go for a crazy big lamp that you, again, typically wouldn't go for. Um, and accessories. I think just a few big key pieces that add a pop of color are always a really easy way to freshen up a room. That's good. So let's talk furniture arrangement and layout. Um, that is something that we can do that costs nothing, right? 
Is there any particular layout that works better, Julie? Really layout um, just depends on the project. You know, your room is going to dictate the layout of your furniture, uh, where windows are, doorways, um, passageways. I do think probably the biggest thing people need to do is get out of their box. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're so used to having everything laid out in a square. I think throw a piece of furniture on an angle. Um, if you can't do that, yeah. throw the rug on an angle. Mm -hmm. Give you kind of a new spin just by shifting furniture in an unusual way that you typically wouldn't lay out a room. Mm, that's so good. You know, you have so many fantastic tips. I love the pillows. I love the lamps. All of those things are so important and not very um, expensive, especially right. if you go somewhere like Home Goods, one of my favorite places, <laughs> um, <clears throat> especially if you're on a budget. And I love to find things that are, you know, thrifty or not very expensive when I can. But I do know a lot of people, Julie, want to break into this industry how did you get started and what are maybe the first steps for other people that are looking to get their feet wet in design? Um, I think a great way to get into the industry is to shadow someone that does this for a living. Um, you really won't learn the ins and outs unless you're actually on the job site. Um, I worked as an interior um, assistant, not really designer, um, for about 12 years. Oh. And that's where I learned the ins and outs of the business. I mean, I think on the job training is key. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you learn so much more on the job than you ever would um, going through a school training program. Yes. Um, but I know there are so many online options now um, just to kind of learn the basics uh, to interior design. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, one other question, Julie, before you go, what are the interior go-to colors for 2021? I would have to say that 2021 is going to be a year of soft, subtle, relaxing colors. Mm -hmm. I think right now with everything going on, um, we need a peaceful uh, place to go. I would say whites, creams, blues, aquas, maybe even a soft blush um, could be the next uh, color trend for 2021. Thanks for being with us, Julie. We will be talking about so much over the next several weeks. We're talking mixing patterns, which I love how you put that together. That's mm -hmm. tough to do. Um, remodel pointers and so much more. So thanks for being with us. You guys, make sure you thanks. meet us. We're looking to do something fun in 2021. And enjoy your Monday. It's the Dr. King holiday and celebration, January 18th. But before you go, where can people find you on social media? Oh, um, actually both. I, um, I'm actually a fan or I favor Facebook, mm -hmm. like, you know, a little bit more than I do Instagram, but I do have both Facebook and Instagram under Wendy Martinez Morales. Um, on Instagram, I am uh, gone with the wind. Um, but yeah, sure. You can find me on there and I'd love to see you follow me. Yeah. Gone with the wind. Fabulous, Wendy. It makes sense. It makes sense. Well, you all make it a great Saturday and tune in next week for more. We'll see you then. Bye.